Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. I recently had a reason to take a look at the ActiveX combo box. And in looking at the various properties, I thought it might be interesting to investigate those a little bit more and see what many of them do. So in this blog post, we're going to take a look at several of those properties and see how they work in Excel. So here I have a list of the 50 states plus the District of Columbia, their abbreviation, and their population. And if I want to do just a basic drop-down list, a data validation list, I would select the cell I want to put it in, go to my Data tab, choose Data Validation, select List, and for Source, I would just select the list of states, I would say OK, and then you can see in cell E10 I have the list of states. Now notice when I click off of that though, I can't even tell that I have a data validation drop-down list there unless my focus is on that cell. And then when I choose any one of the states, whatever appears in that list that I chose is what is the active item that I can use anywhere else in my worksheet or workbook, uh, in formulas, etc. But if I wanted to be more creative, if I wanted to enlarge it, if I wanted to change the font or add more details to that, I'm really limited with what data validation drop-down lists can do. So we're going to instead look at the ActiveX combo box and see the benefits of using that and look at the properties there and see some of the unique things that you can do with that choice in Excel. So I'm going to go to my Developer tab and under Insert I'm going to choose under ActiveX Control the combo box and then I can highlight an area where I want that combo box to be and notice that the combo box is actually an object that I can move anywhere on my worksheet and notice that the drop down arrow is always visible as opposed to how it is with a data validation drop down list. So what I need to do now is tie this to my list that I want to have in my drop down list and also define a linked cell because as with a typical data validation drop down list, whatever I choose here or whatever appears in this list that I choose will be the value that I can use somewhere else within my workbook or in a formula, etc. But that's not the case with an ActiveX combo box. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the design mode, select that, and then click on properties. And what appears is a dialog box that has properties with two tabs, alphabetic and categorized. It's the same list, but in the first choice, they're all in alphabetical order. But in the categorized group, they're grouped into various categories. There's appearance, behavior, data, font, and miscellaneous. Now we're going to work from the bottom up, and I'm going to show you not all, but several of the properties here that I think you might find very interesting. So the first in the miscellaneous group that we're going to look at is linked cell. When I make my choice of the list of states, I need that to be tied to a linked cell, similarly how in the data validation E10 has that as the useful piece of data. So in this case, under linked cell, I'm just going to type H1. And in my list fill range is going to be the range of data that's going to appear in my drop-down list. So here I'm going to put A2 to C52, and that'll cover all three columns of my data for the state, abbreviation, and population. Now, when I click off of the design mode and click on my drop arrow, you can see that there now the states appear, and if I choose one, that choice will appear now in cell H1, and that will be the value that I can use again somewhere else in my workbook, etc. So that is the linked cell and the linked range. Now again, clicking on design mode and selecting that, we're still in the miscellaneous group of properties. And the only other two here that are somewhat interesting is mouse pointer and shadow. Right now it's set as default, but you can change it to an arrow, a cross, an I-beam, etc. 
So if I made it, for example, across, now you can see it turns into a very uh, dark plus sign that you can have instead of your typical arrow. Now I'm going to just change that back to default. The other thing is shadow. Right now it says false, but if I change that to true, notice it adds a little shadow line uh, uh, around my combo box there. I'm going to change that again back to false to remove that shadow line. And now we're going to take a look at the next group, which is font. Now with font, there's only one option here. And if I click on it, and I click on the button with the ellipse, the dialog box pops up. And now I can make several changes to how the font appears. For example, I can change the style maybe to um, Book Antiqua. And I can make it italic and change the size to a 20 and say OK. And now that's how that will appear with my drop down box here. Next, let's take a look at the data group. Now, here, there's these first three are really kind of interesting the bound column, the column count, and the column heads. Now, if you remember, my data had three columns, and I defined all three columns as my range. So with bound column, right now it's set at 1, meaning when I make my choice of state, whatever's in the first column is what is going to appear in my link cell. However, if I change that to a 2, notice whatever's in the second column, in this case my abbreviation will appear there, or if I change that to a 3, I get the population. So I can choose a state say California, and what now appears in my link cell is the data from the third column, in this case, the population. Column count tells me how many columns worth of data I want to appear in my drop-down list. Again, it's only one, so it'll only give me the first columns worth of data in my drop-down. But if I change this to a two, notice, when I click my drop-down list, I get two columns worth of data, the state and its abbreviation. And again, if I change that to a 3, then when I click my drop-down list, I get all three columns worth of data in my drop-down. And then the third one that's of interest is the column heads. Right now it says false, but if I change that to true, and again select that, now it puts the header in there saying state, abbreviation, and population. So I know what the data is that's in my drop down without having to look at the original data. List rows and list style. Right now, list rows is set to eight, which means when I click my drop down, I have eight items that will appear. If I change that, for example, to a four, then when I click my drop down, only four items will appear. So you can control how many you want to see when you click on that drop down arrow to see your list. And list style, right now there's an option of plain or option. And the only difference is if you choose option, now you just get a bullet, a uh, circled bullet that appears in the very left column. Now next, we're going to look at behavior. Now with behavior, there's only a couple here that I want to show you. One is auto size. Right now it's set to false. But if I change that to true, notice how it will automatically size based on whatever choice is made. If I choose Delaware, not a big difference there. But let's say I chose Idaho, notice it collapses down to just fit the size of whatever the choice is. I choose Indiana, it'll expand a little bit further out. So if you want your combo box to be dynamic in its sizing, then you can make auto size being true. I'm going to change it back to false and enlarge it a little bit, both in width and in height. Match entry could be useful to you. Right now it's complete. So with that, as you type, let's say I wanted to type um, uh, Alaska. I type A, L, A. Notice it's only showing me right now the first item that matches that series of letters that I've typed. Now I change it to S or I add an S. And now it chooses Alaska. 
So that is how the option of complete works. But if I change it instead to first letter, now what happens is as I type the first letter, it will give me the first entry that begins with that letter. In this case, I typed an A and I get Alabama. If I type an L here, it jumps down to the L's Louisiana. If I type an O, it gives me Ohio. So that is what the first letter option does as opposed to the entry complete option choice. I'm going to change that back to that. And then text align. Just as it sounds right now, it's aligned left. I can have it aligned center, or I can have it aligned right. Again, whatever your choice might be there. I'll change it back to left. The last group is appearance that I want to talk about. And with appearance, you have a couple different items. First of all, the style is set to combo. So what that means is that I, when I click in my drop-down list, I can delete those and I can type whatever I want and it will give me that choice and I don't have to click my drop down arrow for to make a choice within my data. However, if I instead change this to list, now when I click in here, the drop down list automatically appears. I really don't even have to click in that arrow which then if you set it that way you can actually choose when it has show drop down button when you can say never and then when you click in here you automatically get your list but when you click off of it you just see a blank square you can also change that option for your show drop down button when you can change it to focus. So this way, whenever you click in here, that's when your drop down arrow would appear. Now, if I change this back to combo and took off the design mode, now again, the arrow doesn't appear. I click in here, and that's when I get my drop down arrow, only when there's a focus on my combo box. You have the drop down button style, is something else that may be of interest. Right now, you have an arrow. If I change this back to always, and you see the arrow there, now my drop down style, if I change it to an ellipse, you can see it changed it to the three dots. Or to reduce, you just have the little dash at the bottom. And then the last two items are your background color and your background style, and also your text color. So for example, under back style, right now it shows opaque, but I can also make that transparent. And notice how what, uh, you see the grid lines. And if I move it around, again, it's, it's transparent. Whatever's behind it will be visible. So those are the various things that you can do with an ActiveX combo box, many of which you can't do with a typical data validation drop-down list. So hopefully you've learned something from these properties, and I hope you find it very interesting. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.